Hi everyone, welcome to this ranking video of all the Legend of Zelda protagonists and antagonists. Why protagonists and antagonists? Why not just rank the links and then Zeldas and then villains? Well, it's because I want to get them all the way at once. Uh, incidentally, I will be rating them a bit differently based on either mechanics or story, depending on which one they mostly provide. Uh, but if they provide both, I am taking into account both of these things. And given that short explanation, let's just get started. Zelda 1 Link. At the time, Zelda 1 Link played pretty decent. Nowadays, in modern standards, it feels kind of mid, if not outright bad. But I will put Zelda 1 Link in decent because I still feel it was an innovative uh, way to play adventure games at a time when uh, Zelda 1 came out. It was mostly the save system that really revolutionized uh, how uh, you could play adventure games because quite a few adventure games you couldn't even save, right? Or if you could, it was a PC game. But on a Nintendo, if you wanted to play a long game, you either needed a password system or saving system. And Zelda 1 was one of the first games with that for the consoles, I feel. But uh, not really taking that into account when it comes to playing as Link. It's mostly just the way, strange way you use some items. Like, arrows are used by rupees. Bombs are kind of limited. It also never doesn't tell you how much you can carry as a maximum. It feels very... Uh, arbitrary in that sense and then there's also uh, some other arbitrary stuff uh, mostly i'm thinking of the movement it, it's very uh rigid compared to other games but you know zelda 2 uh, link uh, he plays kind of smoothly right he walks uh actually he walks kind of slippery like very strange the way you move in zelda 2 combat is great fall into pits and dying and losing a life and getting the game over not so much so yeah, slippery movement, uh, combat feels great, but uh, you don't really get to use any items either. Zelda 1, uh, as I mentioned, kind of was very innovative, innovative in the way you used items to solve uh, problems in its uh, environment. And Zelda 2, you get spells, which are kind of the same, but also kind of not because it's very limited in the magic meter. And because of the way it works, you kind of want to save that magic meter for later. So it just doesn't feel as good. As Zelda 1 Link. That's why Zelda 2 Link is in mid. Now, A Link to the Past Link. That's the best. That A Link to the Past just feels so great to play as. And just all the items you get. Many of which I've never seen the light of day ever again. And it feels like a goddamn shame that it didn't. Just even to this day, I feel, even by modern standards, it just feels great to play A Link to the Past Link. It just feels... Amazing. The only like real limitation I feel is that you can only have one item equipped, but uh, it still feels amazing just to use the items. Now, a game where you could actually technically use two items at once, and it doesn't feel as good to play as uh, a Link to the Past Link, is Link's Awakening Link. This one, it was the limit just limitations of the Game Boy, right? There's only like two buttons, A and B, or Start and Select, but like, you might say, oh, well, you can only have one item as a Link to the Past Link. But here's the thing, right? There were four face buttons. And, like, for example, if you wanted to run fast, you could use the A button for that. So that felt very intuitive. But uh, Link to the Past, uh, Link to the, Link to the, Link Awakening Link doesn't get that much in the many options, right? He only gets, like, to equip two items. Two items are your choice, but still, in many cases of the puzzles of Link's Awakening, it kind of required you to just uh, go through the menu many, many times to fix that. Now, if you're playing the remake, Link's Awakening Link's it would probably be up there at the best, but considering there's two games of Link's Awakening that are on the Game Boy that have that limitation, I'm going to leave them down here, mostly for uh, legacy's sake. Now, Ocarina of Time Link. This was ve very revolutionary. I'm not going to put him in the best, but I will put him in great. This was uh, very... Uh, Major, like it was a major, major plot development to have uh, Link uh, be able to like the whole A button and Z targeting system were things like they were the blueprint for many, many action games, and this is the Link that started that. However, there were limitations to it that feel strange, and it did split the uh, exploration portion of gameplay with the combat portion or against the combat portion. Basically, you do exploration and combat in different uh, gameplay versions in uh, Orkana Time. It's kind of hard to explain. I think the sequelitis video by uh, Igor Raptor explains it best, but uh, it still was pretty great the way you got uh, to play as uh, Orkana Time. Just uh, a few flaws here and there that were kind of showing. 
No, Majora's Mask Link, that's just the best. I'm account I am accounting for the masks transformations in this one, but just the different, many different things you can do with the controls in that game, just amazing. It just, it feels like you have so much options. So many options. Even the regular masks feels like they can change your gameplay quite a bit. Bunny Hood? Love that. Like, in Ocarina of Time, you get the Bunny Hood. Nothing changes. You're just wearing it for the sake of uh, talking to an NPC and him being interested in uh, buying it from you. But in Majora's Mask, you better believe I have that crap on all the time. I always have my Bunny Hood on. <laughs> At least when I'm not uh, transformed into uh, Goron or Zor or something. Ooh. Ooh. So, which is the next thing? This, this does not look like uh, Wind Waker Link, which is supposed to be the next one. I think it's this one that's Wind Waker Link. Also, I think I'm missing Oracle Link. Uh, Oracle games uh, would be roughly in the same tier as uh, Link's Awakening, but Wind Waker Link, um, pretty great. Uh, I'm actually putting him in pretty great, mostly because of mechanics. However, when you account for the story development that he got compared to uh, all the other Links, because all the other Links didn't get that much story. Uh, Majora's Mask Link had better expressions, but all the other links before that, the story wasn't a big factor for the main player character, even though Ocarina of Time Link got a bit of love too. But Wind Waker Link was a huge jump. I mean, it hasn't been matched to this day. <laughs> Very unfortunate. But gameplay-wise, it doesn't feel as satisfying as those, those other two. So I would say that he's on the lower end of the best. But it's definitely like, uh, when you capture the story, he's definitely up there. Now, uh, this I believe this is Phantom Hourglass Link. So we should do Minish Cap first, because I have Minish Cap Link right here. Uh, this is decent. I don't really like Minish Cap, uh, gameplay-wise. Uh, I got stuck with some items, because uh, they... Like, we're back with the uh, Link's Awakening borderline controls, except uh, you have L and R. It, that didn't really help, because they dedicated L solely to the Kinstones, and that's just a goddamn shame. So, mm, Minish Cap Link, he's just kind of decent at most. I even want to put him in mid a bit, uh, a bit too, but uh, not quite that bad. Now, um, <laughs> Phantom Hourglass, Link, uh, this is uh, a little rough. When you account for the DS controls and having to use the stylus to move around, it... You don't... You, I don't even think many of us want to fathom controls like that ever again. It Rolling is so weird in Phantom Hourglass. It's just so weird. You have to, like, do a little circle at the edge of the screen? What were they thinking? They also mocked people who were like saying, why can't, why can't we just use the control pad? There's there a skeleton in the Phantom Hourglass that's just like, Oh, I tried to play the game with only uh, normal controls and I died for it. And we can only use the touch controls. It did feel great, Nintendo. I'm just gonna say that right now. It did not feel great. I think control pad and stylus at the same time would have felt better. Or even just as an option. But Nintendo was stubborn that, at that time. Spirit Track Link has the same faults, but story-wise, he's a lot better. I want to put him in lower grade or top of decent. Spirit Track Link, I, I like the whole story deal. You know what? I'll put him in great, lower grade, but uh, very much a bias thing because it's still the touch controls of uh, Phantom Hourglass. But story-wise, I like Spirit Track a whole lot better than the nonsense that was uh, Phantom Hourglass. Hmm. Twilight Princess Link. Great, decent. Uh, we are accounting for the wolf controls with the, this uh, character too, because I don't have wolf link here. So it's going decent. <laughs> Why were there no items when you were wolf link? There were no expanded move set for wolf link. I find that strange, because it means that, uh, like, as soon as you learn to charge move to hit multiple enemies at the same time, wolf link's gameplay never evolves from that point on. I think you can sniff stuff uh, differently too, but beyond that, it just uh, feels kind of lame. Normal, otherwise, uh, Twilight Princess Link plays uh, very much uh, like uh, Ocarina of Time Link as a blueprint. I guess the, the horse controls are better, but there's still a lot of stif stiffness involved here, so that's why Twilight Princess Link only goes down in decent. Uh, Story-wise, I was not that much of a fan either. Just the whole goat herding thing and that, all that stuff. Uh, not my favorite when it comes to story, Twilight Princess Link. Skyward Sword Link. Oh, we're going into motion controls now. Now, I want to say, the motion controls with uh, playing uh, with a sword here, with this Link, I actually pretty feel, feel pretty good. They also didn't do stupid things like uh, if you had to climb something, 
you had to use the nunchuck to go like this and like this and like this and like this. They could have done that. They, they could seriously could have done something like that to, you know, to fully immerse yourself. But uh, yeah, I kind of subconsciously just put the uh, Skyward Sword Link in great because I want to say also story-wise, this Link definitely felt better than, uh, well, these guys, right? Just doesn't play as well because uh, when it comes to using the items, uh, that's kind of a mixed bag. Some of them are kind of intuitive, like the the whole beetle thing, and that's kind of cool. But uh, sometimes the motion controls, uh, they don't calibrate properly, and it just feels bad to not be able to use it the way you wanted to. But story-wise, this Link has a lot more emotional, uh, like a bigger emotional range than the other Link. So that gives him a boost over the decent tier, at the very least. Uh, this is a Link Between Worlds Link. This is... I feel I should put him in the best, right? Because it's basically a link to the past link again. Um, I don't know if I felt that way while playing uh, a link between worlds, though. I kind of want to put him top of great. Not like I feel. I think better story uh, involvement, better character development would have just been the cherry on top for this link to actually make him as good as the best. But right now, I just feel he's just in great. Uh, just. Accounting for the fact that he uh, was made in a much more modern age than uh, Link to the Past Link, it doesn't feel as good control-wise, even if it was like a one-to-one -one replication of uh, a Link to the Past. The Link to the Past was way ahead of its time. Uh, Breath of the Wild Link. Uh, this is lower great. Uh, lower the best, I mean. Amazing controls. Very amazing freedom. You, even now, I, I still love like shield surfing randomly because it's like an extra jump. And, oh uh, yeah, actually, this Link can jump. It's actually something new that was added to the franchise for this one character. Uh, but the controls are also complex, so that's why it's lower the best. And story-wise, uh, doesn't give as much of a range of emotion as he definitely should. But it's also an open-world game, so that's a flaw for that. Uh, also, this also accounts for Tears of the Kingdom, too. Even though it's uh, only Breath of the Wild's uh, art that I'm using for this Link. But it's basically the same character for both games. It doesn't change much at all. In fact, because it's the same character for two games, we're actually dropping them down to great. It's just, you really should have had more character, even though it is an open world game. I feel they could have, they could have tried a bit more, you know? Man, this, this website, tiremaker.com, it sure loves playing ads randomly and making me have to listen to them. It's very annoying. But you guys can still hear me, you don't have to listen to sound anyway. So, moving forward, we have Hyrule Warriors Link. We are going to account for all eight move... Well, actually, it's seven movesets, I think, or maybe even six. But you know, Hyrule Warriors Link has a lot of movesets, and... Uh, do all of them feel fun? Not quite. Some of them are actually just decent. Some of them are actually outright trash. But, he does get interesting story development that puts him up here. Right next to Skyward Sword Link. Uh, the great tier feels a bit crowded right now, doesn't it? <laughs> In fact, maybe I should uh, actually uh, rearrange this uh, to be a bit uh, more uh, better. I'm gonna put leave. Yeah, I'm gonna rearrange the, the tier list a bit more. Hold on a moment. Okay, so I've uh, rearranged the tier list so that uh, things are a bit more balanced, <laughs> not crowded and the great tier like it was before. But uh, just uh, like it doesn't change my opinions and how I feel of some of the characters. But for at least personally. Spirit Tracks Link, uh, he feels really good, not just decent, but, uh, you know, top of decent, still great for me. We have a few more links to account for, though. This one, he's got some mechanics to him, but we all know why he's there. He's the meme. He's kind of an idiot. He plays really badly. He's trash, man. <laughs> like, seriously, it's very funny to laugh at this Link, but uh, story-wise, he's really bad. Like, if you try to take the story of... Uh, the CDI Zeldas very seriously. Uh, the first two. No, I, I don't have the, the Zelda's Adventure characters in this. I don't think anyone particularly cares about Zelda's Adventure. When everyone says CDI Zeldas, they really only mean Wand of Gamelon and Faces of Evil. They don't. No one really remembers Zelda's Adventure and his version of Link, who is basically just rescued at the end and that's it. Uh, now the cartoon Link. I'm actually a bit more of a fan of this one. We don't play as him at all, so it's just story that he's got for him. But I actually think it's kind of... I thought he was kind of funny. And kind of endearing. But also very much an idiot. So he is just mid at best. <laughs> oh man, I, I'm kind of trashing on Phantom Hourglass a bit by putting it on just bad. But I think I have to put at least one link in just bad. In at least each of the tiers. 
But yeah, this is what we're going to go for. Uh, for all the links. I did all the links in order. Now we're going to do the Zeldas. And I want to start with uh, Zelda 1, not uh, this Tetra. Um, I think she goes here. Yeah, whatever. Zelda 1, Zelda. She's actually got a back story to her about how she split the Triforce of uh, Wisdom before Ganon imprisoned her. That makes her decent. Surprisingly decent. You do rescue her in the end, but it, she doesn't... This doesn't feel like a uh, forced romance kind of thing where she just falls in love with the hero after everything happened. So, overall, this is Zelda 1. Zelda, pretty decent, story-wise. Pretty decent. Now, Zelda 2 Zelda, the one that's sleeping and it's like a completely different Zelda from the Zelda 1 Zelda that's supposed to still exist. Just, she's just bad, man. She just wakes up and immediately kisses the first guy she sees. Like, I, I, get, there, I get that there's like a screen transition before anything else uh, happens after she wakes up, but uh, that's just kind of bad, man. It's just, uh, she's just a typical damsel in distress that kisses her hero as soon as you rescue her. Some people are fans of that. Some people are fans of that, but she she contradicts the Lord by just existing in a weird way, and it just doesn't feel very great. Is it the same Zelda? Is it, am I the same Link? Who knows? And who cares? She's just kind of bad. A Link to the past Zelda? Her, her whole head is cut off. It's kind of quite unfortunate. <laughs> She's really good. She's really good. I would put her at top of decent. Uh, her, the whole... No, what? we'll put her at bottom of great. She, the whole uh, escape sequence with this Zelda is very much uh, underrated, I feel. it uh, For the time of the, the franchise's history, the fact that the character you're trying to rescue is like actively talking with you while it's happening, and they were following you, it, it just feels really, really good. That's why I've, I have a soft spot for her. But unfortunately, she does get damsel in distress uh, later on, and you never see her again once she gets uh, put into the dark world. So that's kind of unfortunate. But for the time, this Zelda was quite revolutionary for me. Uh, Ocarina of Time, Young Zelda. This is different from the older Zelda that we're going to rank differently. Young Zelda? Pretty decent. I think I'll put her here. She's quite naive and foolish, but she's very much an agent in the plot, it feels. I, I really like that aspect of her this uh, young Zelda. We also see her a bit of Majora's Mask, where we can get a bit more insight into her, her character in that game, but uh, overall, I just think she's a pretty well-executed, uh, naive princess type, that you don't really rescue. That's something that people don't seem to account. Young Zelda, you don't really rescue her. You're just kind of in her plot to uh, try to uh, assassinate this uh, black guy that uh, she just met and thinks he's really suspicious. Very, very stupid of her in that sense. Very racist, too, but you know, she happened to be right on the money, technically. <laughs> now, older Ocarina of Time Zelda, I'm not quite a bit of as a fan of her. Uh, this doesn't even account for Sheik, by the way. Sheik is really cool. But Sheik also kind of, like, instead of directly helping Link when she could have, just kind of is, like, I'm the mysterious character in the shadows that just keeps uh, standing back and not doing anything because... It's mostly because it would have been too hard to program, but we have to accept uh, it at face value that story-wise, she really could have helped us when it mattered. And she does kind of technically try to help us in the it's when it shows uh, the boss from the Shadow Temple escaping, Bongo Bongo. Uh, but it's kind of an awkward scene and doesn't feel like your characters... It just feels like your characters got bodied, particularly Sheik, who just kind of like got, gets bodied immediately and then is like, Wait, don't do it, Link! And he just gets bodied uh, with a screen uh, shifting to black because it would have been too hard to animate or something. But yeah, the reason why she's in mid really is because uh, as soon as she reveals herself to Link, immediately gets captured. Immediately gets captured. Very dumb plot development thing and drags her down to mid. Very unfortunate. Uh, now we have, I think this is Ocre Oracle Games uh, Zelda. She's just bad. <laughs> she appears at like the end of the Link game playthrough and she Gives Link a kiss for rescuing her, but yeah, she just appears to get captured, basically. It's supposed to be the same Zelda as a Link to the Past Zelda 2, I think. And that that gives me a, a sour taste in my mouth. Oh, I need to drink more of my juice. Ugh. Yeah, just bad. I don't like uh, Oracle Games uh, Zelda as much. She, she was very unnecessary, I feel. Not horrible, but really uh, underwhelming. Uh, might as well put these two together because I hate them for the same reason. Just immediately gets captured or dis put into a comatose uh, state. As soon as they're rescued, they kiss the hero. That's just not good. Uh, Tetra. Tetra will be ranked separately from... Uh, actually, should I rank uh, Zelda 
of uh, Wind Waker separately uh, with, from Tetra. I'm not sure if I should. I, also, I have a duplicate uh, portrait of her, so I'll drag them down here. I'll use uh, Tetra because uh, she's a bit more... Uh, like, uh, she stands out more. But uh, overall, uh, this also accounts for her time as uh, uh, Zelda, for example. Uh, she's great. In fact, I kind of want to put her in the best. Tetra is uh, really, really good. She actually, she actually helps you mechanically in the final boss fight. All kind of times Zelda kind of does too, but it's a cutscene, right? Where she holds Ganon down after you basically beat him into the inch of his life. Not very good. This Zelda, this Tetra of Wind Waker, actually helps you during the final boss and also very much feels like an ancient in the plot. So really, really good. That's uh, really, really what uh, you kind of expect uh, out of Zelda if you're not going to play as her yourself. So she's up there and lower the best with the uh, Wind Waker link. Wind Waker was so good, man, on many aspects. Uh, until you get to uh, the Triforce chart uh, on Quest. Anyway, uh, this is Four Sword Zelda. Just mid. Actually, no, I, I don't like her. This is different. I don't think she gets captured. I can't remember much about Four Swords. But I don't like her design at all. It feels like uh, very much a bootleg uh, Wind Waker Zelda. Like you, this is, Just compare the uh, art style. Uh, it would be better if I use this. Compare the art style between these two, if you can zoom in and look, look closely. There's so much more life in uh, the Wind Waker art compared to uh, the Four Sword art. She just feels so much more lifeless than that. And yet she's clearly supposed to be the same. This was very much the era where Nintendo, or even Miyamoto, I want to say, was very much pushing for the Wind Waker art style to be the main art style of the Zelda series forever. And, well, I'm sure many people are glad that didn't stick. <laughs> Many people are glad. Oh, it's uh, time for Twilight Princess Zelda. She's just bad, man. She's just bad. So many bad Zeldas. Twilight Princess Zelda. They try. I'll put her in lower mid, actually. They try with uh, Twilight Princess Zelda. And by trying, I mean they don't. She has no emotion at all. And she really should. She, she She's the reverse Tetra. She feels like she has no agency in the plot at all. She does help you mechanically in one of the fights, which is why I put her over just bad because uh, I did kind of like that but it it doesn't there's no emotional connection with Zelda she lacks that just awful in that sense it's a very much a wasted potential I feel now Tetra of Phantom Hourglass this is trash this is outright trash she just gets captured and it's completely despoils all the amazing stuff uh Tetra did in uh, Wind Waker. Tetra in Wind Waker did get captured. Like, uh, as soon as she got revealed as she was Zelda and she got stuck in the uh, Hyrule Temple and... Not not Hyrule Temple, just Hyrule Castle the, deep down underwater. But her character in uh, help in the final boss fight shined through that despite that. This uh, Zelda, Tetra? No way. No way. I think she does something in the final boss of uh, Phantom Hourglass where she helps in a cutscene. Not as good as outright helping you in the fight. Not as good. Now, Minish Cap Zelda. Uh, I have no real opinion of her. I. She's just kind of mid. I don't remember much about this Zelda. I know she gets captured. She she has like a light force that uh, the villain that uh, tries to absorb her the entire game. But she does laugh at the intro cutscene where she gives you the shield and it's like, uh, that's cute. Kind of wish she just didn't get uh, captured right after though, so that she turns uh, into a statue if you don't uh, help her as well. And, like I believe in the final boss battle, if you don't hurry in the last uh, fight against uh, some uh, uh, dark nuts or something, she'll actually die. Kind of depressing to think about. It's just a non-standard game over. But uh, yeah, it just doesn't give much of an impression. This Zelda, she very much feels like a plot device after the intro cutscene. A shame. Now I've got two portraits of uh, Skyward Sword Zelda. Whoops. Uh, Skyward Sword Zelda, mm, she's wasted potential for sure, but I also kind of like her design and personal quest. I'll put her in decent, right next to uh, Skyward Sword Link, in fact. Yeah, they're just decent, but in her case, it's instead of the mechanics, it very much feels like a, the, she's very much wasted potential. There really should have been a like a playable side mode where you do some of the things as Zelda. It would have uh, helped a lot of her Skyward Sword's reputation if they did that. Or including the HD release as a bonus, as opposed to charging us $60 and not adding anything new. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it just feels like wasted potential, but everything that was there 
it does feel like they tried. I can see some people not liking this Zelda at all, though, because of the cliche the teen romance thing they did at the beginning. But I thought it was okay. I thought it was okay. I didn't think it was that bad. And it's not like it was done in the franchise beforehand. Just, it felt very weird for Link and Zelda to be like that. Like, they were really pushing Link and Zelda as a ship and Skyward Sword. So, you know. Uh, Phantom? No, no, this is not Phantom Hourglass <laughs> Zelda. Of course not. Uh, who would it be under that charge? This is Spirit Track Zelda. This is the best. The best Zelda. My favorite Zelda. I love Spirit Track Zelda. She is the one who pl who helps you mechanically the entire game. That's why I like her so much. I really wish they did something like this again, where Zelda was your side character, your sidekick, and could actively help you in gameplay, like more than a like a fairy does. I really love Spirit Track Zelda, especially in the ending, though, because uh, not to delve into mini spoilers, but uh, you actually play as this Zelda as she is normally, not, like not in ghost form or Phantom Ganon form. What the hell happened? She, you do help, she helps you in real life, <laughs> yeah, in real life, as her real self in the final battle, and you just get a moment where you have to guide her to uh, help you fin finish off the final boss, and it just feels so great. And also, she has got she gets character development too, that also feels really great. They could have, she could have been down here if they didn't do it right. She could have been down here, but they did, I feel they did it right, and I don't, I don't want to say she's perfect, but she is so far my favorite Zelda, for sure. Uh, a link between worlds, Zelda. <sighs> She's cute. She's just kind of mid. She has some wise words and wise actions in the uh, intro and ending, but uh, she gets captured pretty damn quickly, I feel. And it doesn't feel as revolutionary for as uh, the Link to the Past Zelda that uh, you helped uh, guide out of the uh, Herald Castle and the through the sewers. So she goes down here. Not, not quite as good as uh, she could have been. But also... Link Between Worlds feels like it should be Hilda's game, too, so it's not that bad. It's not that bad. I'm fine with the Zelda, and I'm fine with her being playable in Smash Ultimate, you know, as the main Zelda. It was actually a very strange decision for them to do that, to use this Zelda, but I mean, I guess she was kind of the most recent Zelda at the time, uh, you know, except for Breath of the Wild Zelda. <laughs> uh, this is, yeah, this is specifically Breath of the Wild Zelda, not Tears of the Kingdom Zelda. Um, I don't want to get into voice acting, but I didn't really care much for her lines in uh, Breath of the Wild. And her actions in the ending, where she kind of just outright tells you how to be the final boss, doesn't feel that great. But all those flashbacks do help to endear us to her, her character, and she does have an arc. So I'll put her in high grade, uh, high decent. I was going to put her in, no, you know what, let's put her in low grade. I, I kind of feel bad for putting her right next to A Link to the Past Zelda, who I like a lot more. But overall, the decisions they made for showing her character in Breath of the Wild felt like a huge step forward for her uh, for her as a character. You know, people people remember this Zelda, and they'll remember her for quite a few years, I feel. Now, that being said, Tears of the Kingdom Zelda, much higher, much higher. I... I kind of want to put her up uh, in uh, the best, but she does, she's not quite up there. She is above uh, Breath of the Wild Link, though, and Tears of the Kingdom Link, I guess. But they did a lot better for her in uh, Tears of the Kingdom. Just, <laughs> if only she was playable, or had a playable segment, then she'd be in the best, for sure. I, I kind of want to put her in lower the best. You know what? Yeah, let's put her there. I think she deserves lower, low, low the best rank. <laughs> Uh, CDI Zelda, honestly, plays as badly as uh, CDI Link, but character-wise, she's a lot more entertaining. So she's just mid. She'd be actually much higher if uh, the CDI Zeldas weren't so bad to play. I actually kind of like uh, her character, but I like even like unironically, I like uh, CDI Zelda's character. She feels uh, like the straight man of uh, the whole franchise, while Link feels very much like a complete idiot. It, it feels so off-putting the way they characterize Link. Like they were actively trying to assassinate, assassinate his character, whatever there was of it. It's important to remember that uh, Ocarina of Time wasn't even out when the CDI games were made. They did, the creators of uh, those games didn't have much to go on. They, they had the cartoon, that's what they had. <laughs> but CDI Zelda, unironically, she feels a lot more like serious and just that makes her a lot more funny. And uh, it'd be outright great if it wasn't for the fact that the CDI Zeldas are awful to play as. <laughs> just 
awful controls. And that's all the Zeldas, at least all the ones that I accounted for. I think I might be missing one somewhere. But all the ones I cared about... <sighs> now, it's time for the villains. And am I still in camera? I guess I am. But uh, it's time for the villains. And I have to readjust myself. Actually, no. I say it's time for the villains, but I forgot one of the main characters of... Uh, of a Twilight Princess, Minda. Minda goes in the best. She's... I don't want to put her above... Uh, I'll put her in lower the best. Minda is very much the main character of Twilight Princess. And she is, in a vacuum, very, very well done. But they put so much effort into her that it kind of detracts of all the other characters. Or most of the other characters. And that's why I don't consider her to be like top of the top. Like some of the characters. There, there's so much... There, if you put in too much effort into one character at the detriment of other characters, which is what I feel about Minna, that that, that kind of punishes that character, like how I feel about that character, right? It's a, it's a, it feels like you put in too much effort when you could have or like dialed it back a bit to give a bit more love to other characters. Like, you know, this one. <laughs> give a bit more emotion to this one. A bit more inter, like, I mean, more personality that doesn't require us to read fanfics, you know? You know? Okay, anyway, moving on to villains. Uh, we've got quite a few here, and they're not ordered, so uh, it's going to be a bit more random the way I do this stuff there. Uh, Zelda 1 Ganon. He's blue. He teleports around. He kind of feels bad to fight. He kind of feels really bad to fight. And he, his sprite looks very strange, I feel, too. Like, uh, the way I saw his eyes, the first time I, 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 when I used to see him, it did not look right. I did not see it the way Nintendo wanted me to see it. So, he just goes in bad. I don't like I don't like the way you fight this cannon. He just feels very random. Like, they were trying to do everything in their power to make sure he's a challenge without making it feel like it makes any sense. So, yeah, just bad. Uh, see ya from... Uh, oh, wow. Now I, know, now I know which Zeldas and Links I didn't account for. It's the Cadence of Hyrule Link and Zeldas. Uh, we're going to ignore them, though. <laughs> but we will uh, check out the Octavio, which is from uh, Cadence of Hyrule. But yeah, Sia from Hyrule Warriors. Very much a Koi Tecmo uh, female character. Super sexy. Uh, unreasonably sexy, in fact. But character-wise, I don't mind her as much. I think she's decent character-wise. I think she's actually okay. I would put her here. She's actually fun to play as, too. So, Sia... The, the, one of like one of the main villains of uh, Harold Warriors. I actually kind of like her. I just kind of wish she wasn't so overtly. Uh, Please look at my body and feel hot, uh, nerds. But uh, story-wise, she really just feels that way about Link. So that's something to consider. Uh, and also, yeah, she she very much. Uh, it's very much also the plot. Actually, I feel executes her well. Not just the uh, and I don't much mean very much her dying. I also just mean the, the way uh, she uh, tries to take charge when Ganon tries to wrest control from her. It doesn't quite pan out uh, for her in the end, but she tried. Uh, that being said, I want to account for the Hyrule Warrior Legends plot too. She kind of gets brought back and you don't get to see the aftermath of that. That kind of pushes her down a bit. Uh, yeah. I'll put her in high mid. I kind of want to put her in decent, but uh, it's she's mostly carried by some aspects of her story, but... Hyrule Warriors Legends brings her back to life, but it also doesn't do, like, it doesn't uh, expand upon what happens when she's brought to life. It just kind of immediately ends after she's brought to life, and she's just kind of over her obsession with Link at that point. We're, we're supposed to take that as face value. It it doesn't feel right. I think they should have done a bit more, and then she would have been back into decent. So, she's decent if you take it into uh, account uh, your fanfic theories about uh, what happens to her after Hyrule Warrior Legends. Otherwise, she's just high mid for me. That's what I think. Uh, Octavio. He's got character. And his boss fight is kind of cool. I love the musical theme to it. So I think I'll put him up here. I never did a playthrough of uh, Cadence of Hyrule for people. I probably should do that at some point. It's just, it plays so much differently. And it feels more like a Crypt of the Necrodancer game than a Zelda game. That's a problem. <laughs> but very much an underrated game. Very much an underrated game, and I uh, I like how different Octavio feels uh, compared to other Zelda villains. So he feels like a breath of fresh air in that sense. So I'll leave him be. He's decent. Burn from uh, Spirit Tracks. He's a boss fight. He's technically a villain, but he no uh, not to get too much into spoilers, but he kind of has a change of heart at some point. He's great, uh, lower great, but uh, I, I I really like uh, his boss fight. It, 
doesn't feel very hard, but it his design is very unique in that sense, and they made use of it in that boss fight. Not the best, but I, I actually quite liked them. Didn't feel that was that bad. Now, Zant, unlike uh, Burn, who felt like he was used to most of his potential, Zant... <sighs> he got screwed hard. He got screwed hard. L middle mid, 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 mid. He had so much potential, but they had to like uh, change their mind halfway through uh, Twilight Princess to introduce us to the real bad guy right here, which is uh, <sighs> Twilight Princess Ganon. And Twilight Princess Ganon, I know some people are fans of this design. He feels like he's got a stick up his ass. He's just bad, man. <laughs> he's just He just got pushed right into the plot, and it just kind of like it was to the detriment of everything else it's a lot like minna except minna who is still considered good in my opinion ganondorf it just it just feels very much like it was just pushed into the plot for the sake of being cool now fighting ganondorf in uh, twilight princess does feel great so i think he goes into the cdi zelda tier of uh, feels great to fight for the most part it feels a bit stiff in some accounts and it doesn't feel that great in some uh, aspects but uh, Plot-wise, he very much should not have been there. It should have been Zant from beginning to end. And if we were going to make Zant crazy in the second half, it should have been... Uh, there should have been a bit of a flow to it, you know? And there very much was not. Oh, it's Lana from Hyrule Warriors. Trash. <laughs> Feels so awful to play as Lana, man. I don't... She has three movesets. I don't like to play as any of them. Except Summoning Gate, but Summoning Gate sucks uh, in meta. So, I don't like playing as Lana at all. And I don't like her attitude at all. Plot-wise, and only plot-wise, she'd just be mid. But when you take into account her gameplay and her freaking uh, Kawaii Desu ending of uh, being an idol uh, that Koi Tecmo was just uh, trying to design her to be, I... No. No. Get that trash out of my Zelda. Ugh. Awful. I never want to see her again. It says a lot about the fact that I prefer Sia over her, <laughs> too, because uh, the plot does try to make you like Lana, but... Uh, again, if it was just plot, she'd be up here. But when you take into account her gameplay and uh, her uh, outro sequences when you win and stuff, uh, no. I don't give a crap. No way, Jose. Cole from uh, Spirit Tracks. Just kind of mid. I know this is probably controversial to some people. He's so overly obviously evil, but it kind of works for him for me. Like, it, it's so transparent. It, it, it would have been awful if they tried to pretend that we couldn't figure it out right away. But he's like, within the first hour, he's revealed to be like a, a really bad guy. So yeah, he's right next to Zant, and I know some people are gonna hate me for thinking that, but oh, so he's so overtly evil that it's kind of funny for me. And he's kind of a like an assist character for the main villain in Spirit Tracks, which I think is a creative idea that isn't quite used as much as some people might think. There are like side character, side villains that uh, do much, like Gearheim, for example, is very much a side villain in... Uh, uh, Scarlet Sword, and uh, but he doesn't like assist directly the main villain in an assist kind of way, like uh, Cole does in uh, one of the final boss fights. Uh, speaking speaking of Gearham, Gearham very much doesn't have much character, but I think it works for him. Uh, <laughs> might as well put this whole Scarlet Sword crew right here. <laughs> Scarlet Sword is just decent to me, character and mechanics wise. Uh, but if we were taking into account Gearham only in uh, Hyrule Warriors, so he'd be up there. I love playing as Gearheim in uh, Harold Warriors. He's like my absolute favorite character. <laughs> uh, Vati. This is uh, Minishka Vati specifically, not uh, the uh, Four Swords uh, and Four Swords Adventures Vati. <sighs> Controversial opinion again. This is Teen Girl Bait. <laughs> this is totally Teen Girl Bait. Vati is given this, uh, like, uh, boyish, cutish look, despite being a super flat, overly evil villain. And he got a he, he got a boost in his fan uh, his fans in general just because of this design, which I guess speaks volumes of how well this design works for some people. But personally, I just think this looks mid in design. It doesn't feel nearly as good. And again, I have a bit of a bias against Minish Cap. I actually don't mind fighting this Vati in the final boss battle. I think it's kind of fun because uh, it's three forms. But uh, design-wise, I'm not much of a fan. He, he is better than definitely a Four Swords Zelda, though. I'll give it that much. He's just doesn't feel. Does that presence? That's the problem I have with uh, this uh, Vati. He 
doesn't give off this ominous aura of presence that a main villain should give. He kind of doesn't stand out, is what I'm trying to get to. So that's unfortunate. But also, uh, very much some people don't like this design purely because it feels like it was made to appeal to young teenage girls who are into pretty boys. <laughs> so that's another thing that some people don't like about this. And uh, maybe I'm a bit of that too, but uh, trying to be as least biased as possible, I just feel it's just mid, this design. Uh, but mechanics, I thought it was kind of fun. Uh, Ocarina of Time Ganondorf. Hmm. Well, considering this design is... Yeah, we're going to put it in great. No, no cap, just in great. This is a classic design that people love and uh, are fans of. Character-wise, doesn't have much to for him. But boss fights, eh, very much uh, like the tennis ball thing. That wasn't exactly done before. It was done in by Aghanim in The Link to the Past, but it actually felt worse in uh, Link to the Past. Now... The problem is that uh, Aghanim is actually technically just Ganon in disguise, like a Link to the Past Ganon in disguise. I kind of want to rate those two separately, though. Aghanim and a Link to the Past Ganon. Um, Aghanim goes into great. I love his design, and he definitely gives off this aura of uh, he's straight up evil and we have to stop him. And he's kind of like... His sprite isn't as good, actually. You know what? R ranking him with his sprite into a take into account, I don't feel it's as good. If it was, if it was that design specifically, where you see that he's got clearly blue skin, I think I would have liked it a bit better, maybe. But his sprite is just like a complete shadow. They were, they were clearly uh, struggling a bit with the sprite work in the Link to the Past, given the uh, palette of the shoes with the Link. But yeah, Agony I quite like, and a Link to the Pan, a Link to the Pan, and. A link to the past, Ganon. I think he's great to fight. Character-wise, I guess we have to take into account Aghanim too. But uh, a link to the past, Ganon, just feels very great to fight and very menacing too. Like it's it's not an easy fight the first time you do it, especially if you fall and uh, you kind of lose all your progress. So that's kind of unfortunate. But uh, just I feel a link to the past, Ganon, is up there with the best, uh, except not on the best. Just uh, great. <laughs> uh, this is Oracle Ganon, I believe. He's just a mindless beast, unfortunately. So, he's just decent. I mean, when you take into account like Ocarina of Time Ganon, which I feel technically speaking is probably what, something that's holding back uh, Ocarina of Time Ganondorf from being the best, is that uh, regular, like his Ganon form in the ending just feels like they, they shoot it in, right? They didn't have to shoot it in, but uh, they, they left it in because they thought they were thinking, oh, it's Ganondorf. We, we have to make him to transform into Ganon, even though we didn't exactly uh, foreshadow it. But uh, Oracle Ganon, fun to fight, but he's a mindless beast with no character. So that's all. That's, he's just okay. He's just mi above mid, but low decent. Not not much else to say. Yuga. Yuga, Yuga, Yuga. Yuga's pretty good. I'm going to put him next to Burn. Low great. Um, his boss fights aren't amazing. But I do like... like There's clearly a, pr a level of presence and uh, story uh, actions that uh, gives off this... Uh, he's the main bad guy feeling for to him. I, it's very weird for me to say this, but he kind of gets uh, kidnapped by Hilda mid-playthrough uh, of uh, A Link Between Worlds. And I feel they could have done something to keep him involved in the plot at that point in a way, but... They also very much uh, kind of had to let you do whatever you wanted to do because uh, Link Between the Worlds was a lot more open compared to uh, the previous entry, which was Scarred Sword. So people like that for him. But yeah, he goes here. He's a great design and very much the alternate world Ganon that uh, ends up fusing with Ganon, which is kind of weird to think about. Uh, speaking of a Link Between Worlds Ganon, he's... You don't even fight this one. He's just... But he's uh, got an ominous aura in the, the background lore. I guess I have to take into account that this is basically the same Ganon as a Link to the Past in a sense. But uh, we're going to put him in mid because uh, he's just pure lore. Uh, unless we unless we want to take into account this is a mechanic thing. Well, even then I just put him in mid. He just gets possessed by Yuga and from that point on it's it's 100% Yuga's personality shining through uh, Yuga and in, <laughs> I guess. Ocarina of Time, uh, not Ocarina of Time, Wind Waker Ganon, Dorf. He's one of the best. Wing Ricker is so good, man. So many good characters up there. Characterization was amazing for Ganondorf uh, in uh, Wind Waker. This is, this is definitely the same Ganondorf as Ocarina of Time Ganondorf, but character-wise, it's, it's in Wind Waker that he got all of his uh, 
explanation for his actions. Like it was just like a few, couple of lines, but it does so much for explaining why he acts the way he does. Uh, I don't want to put him over Tetra though, he's a bit below that. Also, he's very fun to fight. It's not a very tough fight. Uh, some person actually did uh, lose their uh, world record streak. Their world record uh, pace speed run to him, so that's kind of funny. But overall, uh, if you're at 20 hearts and whatever, uh, he's not that tough of a fight. But it's a very fun and with a very climatic ending too. And with all the character too, very much uh, the best the character. Uh, these Zeldas are just uh, Wind Waker Zelda again. Now we got Calamity Ganon, specifically Calamity Ganon, not uh, Dark Beast Ganon. This has an ominous aura, and the boss fight is not too bad itself when you get to it. Uh, but it feels like they, they weren't thinking too much about the plot when making up this guy. And it kind of contradicts everything that happened in Tears of the Kingdom. So he just goes into... Decent. I'll put him right here. Dark Beast Cannon. Oh, get that trash out of there. Come on. It was such a bad boss fight. Uh, like, it's also with another problem. It's uh, Breath of the Wild Zelda, which is definitely something that brought her down to tears. Just keeps narrating to you to how to beat this guy but he's got one attack a giant laser beam so it's not even that creative an attack and it doesn't even like do the level of a destruction you'd expect it to just a very bad boss fight mechanically it's a, a horrible way to cap off Breath of the Wild Vati Four Swords Four Swords Adventures hmm he kind of gets bodied by the actual uh, <laughs> Four Swords Adventures canon, but I think he's the actual final boss of Four Swords. I only played Four Swords once and I lost my copy. I, I, I had it on my 3DS as a downloadable title, but then I transferred all my data except it was the wrong data, so I lost that copy forever. Very unfortunate. Uh, but yeah, Four Swords Adventure Vati. Um, it's a fun boss fight, but it's also very much just decent. Not much more else to it. Also, it, like, it has to say, right? I put the Minish Cap Vati down here, and Minish Cap was definitely Vati's game as a villain. But holy crap, I don't care much for his design so much that I put uh, regular ass eyeball Vati up there. But you, you have to consider, he Minish Cap Vati basically ends up turning into eyeball Vati when he gets like super pissed off. So it speaks that Nintendo values this design more than this design when it comes to challenging you mechanically in the boss fight so i think this design's better and it feels better to fight too so that's why he's up here uh majora's mask uh amazing the best character wise and lore wise uh, it fits too but it is a bit uh like it's not top 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 but it is up there like also mechanically i although i much prefer this boss fight over ganon like the three uh, majora's incarnation wrath and uh, mask uh, boss fights very much I prefer it over Ganon from uh, Ocarina of Time, but admittedly, uh, you don't... Majora's Mask doesn't deal that much damage. If, if Majora's Mask dealt like even just double damage in that boss fight, that, it would have been uh, even higher, I feel. But it is the best in terms of how you do a villain. It, it was very unorthodox and very satisfying. Bellum from Phantom Hourglass. Uh, no, this villain is not talked about much. It's very much a force of nature used to its maximum potential i feel and it is kind of creepy and it does feel kind of neat to fight and it's two boss fights i am taking into account the other boss fight yes uh but i feel it's just decent at best i i feel it's a bit held back by the ds graphic quality and uh but like as far as uh this being like the final boss of uh feta Class, which is the, like a zelda game i hate probably my one of my least liked zeldas um I think it's a good cap off. It, it, it was used to its maximum potential. Never want to see it again, though. <laughs> demise, 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 demise. He's decent. He's just. I kind of want to put him in mid. I'll put him in lower decent, though. Uh, he's just kind of. Uh, very much feels like a force of nature, but he does have a personality. Yeah, it's at the very end of the game you feel you fight it, though. I am taking into account the imprisoned boss fights in, uh, when it comes to this, by the way, because it is technically demise, just mindless. I actually. I don't mind those boss fights like some people do. Some people hate those boss fights. I understand that boss fight two and three between the imprisoned are they happen like one hour between each other. It's way too fast, but it's very unorthodox and it requires you to play the game differently to actually win. And that I feel the the, the games need to do that more often to make the boss fights memorable. Just boss fight two and three really should not have been next to each other and the. Footsteps always causing shockwaves was definitely kind of a lazy way 
to force you to uh, deal with this boss very much. <laughs> so that's kind of unfortunate. But I, uh, concept-wise, I, I quite liked a bit uh, both the imprisoned boss fights and undercooked uh, when it comes to showcasing this character's personality in the ending. So it just goes into lower descent. Uh, Thunderbird! This is just a mindless boss you face at the end, so it just goes into bit. I actually kind of like fighting Thunderbird. I think uh, there's a bit of a challenge to it, and uh, you have to manage how you move during that boss after <laughs> after casting the jump and thunder spell. But yeah, it's just lower mid because if you don't have the thunder spell ready, as in you don't have enough magic to cast it, this boss fight's impossible for no reason. They couldn't have just made it like you deal half or a quarter damage to it and it makes it so much tougher. No, you need to cast a thunder spell to even do any damage to the Thunderbird. Very weird. But it was a product of Kutsera, so lower bid. I uh, know, you know what? Just bad. Just bad design for making it that way. And the just bad the thing is just not that great. <laughs> uh, no, Tears of the Kingdom, Gandorf. Pretty good. Not the best. The boss fight, like the boss fight, has uh, some twists and turns. I am to take into account uh, Demon King Gandalf and uh, Demon Dragon into this. They did pretty good with them. It's just he deals too little damage for a final boss. It's a lot better than Dark Beast and Calamity Ganondorf. And the design of Ganondorf obviously gets a personality in the flashbacks and whatever, and even the final boss fight. It's very flat though. But mechanically, I was quite satisfied with his design and. Uh, I would like to see it in the next Smash Brothers game. <laughs> Preferably with a non-Captain Falcon moveset. <laughs> oh, here, here we go. The Four Swords Adventures Ganondorf. Or Ganon, I, there's no Ganondorf in Four Swords Adventures. This one's pretty good. Uh, well, put him high decent. Four Swords Adventures Ganon basically completely uh, screws over Vati, who was... Uh, I can't remember the, the plot specifics, but I think Vati was trying to get uh, Ganon revived or something to use him, but... Ganon was actually controlling them all along or something. So as far as Ganons are concerned, Four Swords Adventures Ganon, uh, kind of underestimated. And the boss fight, I remember, isn't too bad either. Uh, very much a multiplayer thing though, so I'm taking that into account. Uh, Twin Rova, Oracle Games. She's actually, the like this is accounted for the two separate pieces though. She's the one who is basically instigating the, the revival of Ganon in, in uh, that game. And... They did it okay. They, they did just okay. It's every like back when I was a kid and playing the Oracle games, I just felt it was kind of like it felt kind of bad for Twin Rova to appear in the ending, then just go hee hee hee. You just beat our our, our villain Onox or uh, Varen, and uh, you think you've won, Link. But uh, we've got this plot to revive the real evil right here. Oh, by the way, I don't have a uh, Varen and Onox here. Let me let me put them on. Hold, hold on, I mean, we need to put them on here. All right, Varen and Onox. Let's actually go through them real quick. I mentioned Twin Rova, uh, very much just a character who was created to uh, make you buy the other game. I feel, but and the boss fight is just okay. I actually prefer this boss fight over Ocarina of Time's version, though, because like uh, Twin Rova and their unfused elements in uh, Ocarina of Time, it's just you just hold the mirror shield, absorb the elements, and hit the, the other one with it. And when it's Twin Rova, you absorb three of the same elements, and then just to stun a Twin Rover for some damage. So it's not that exciting compared to like Bongo Bongo or Baronade or whatever the Zora domain boss was. Anyway, Onox, uh, very much just mid. Very much just a generic uh, big bad guy that uh, immediately captures Din and uh, when you, like he doesn't really do anything else during the plot. Uh, he's very much just a, uh, like, <laughs> he's very much just a flat, uh, Baron type of a villain who's uh doesn't doesn't like he feels like he should be much more involved in the plot, but he, like he instantly captures through a teleport or some kind of thing, Din, and that then does nothing else for the rest of the game. And the boss fight is it's, it's a bit creative, but it's also confusing when you do it because uh, you have to avoid uh, hitting Din, or else you get damaged. Uh, but uh, also, what really like puts him down in mid to me, uh, mid mid, it's the fact that. Uh, he turns into a drag. <laughs> it's a cool fight, but it's very, very generic. Very, very generic guy. Very, very mid-mid. So he goes down here. Varen is a lot better. She's not amazing by any stretch of the means, but her involvement in the plot of Oracle of Ages is a lot more involved and feels a lot more uh, cool in that sense. Like, she's constantly changing her plans to uh, adapt accordingly to uh, succeed and... Uh, ruining the timeline or whatever she does like 
can't remember something like that <laughs> overall uh, though uh, i preferred varin a lot more than onox that's for sure uh maladeus this is the spirit of maladeus but uh think of it as the final boss specifically because uh basically maladeus possesses a uh, spirit track zelda for most of the game like her body and then uh, in the ending uh, he has to sp he, he needs to possess someone else and he possesses coal which turns him into some kind of a uh, very ganon like beast uh, but gameplay wise i thought it was really cool fighting maladeus but very much again uh, a bit generic in that sense just mechanically i thought they did a lot better than onox that's for sure but he's also very much a generic do doomsday guy who kind of came out of nowhere like uh, just never heard of him before and people theorize that he's like the same spirit of his demise just instead of possessing ganondorf it it goes for someone else because uh who else can it go for nowadays right uh, we've only got two left here because these Portrait of Zelda's are dupes. Uh, we got Link's Adventure. No, Adventure of Link specifically, not Link's Adventure. <sighs> this is a... You don't fight this cannon. But I thought, in terms of story, this is a huge... Uh, this is very cool. that he. You only see him in the game over, right? They do talk about him a bit, uh... I think in uh, some of the story, but the, you only really see him in the game over. I think it's a very effective way of convincing you that you should not fail at your adventure. It's very cool. And the fact that it goes so high up just goes to show uh, how uh, bad mechanics can drag you down, while good story presence can put you really high up. But I thought it was really cool the way they presented uh, Ganon in uh, Link, uh, Adventure of Link. I don't know why I want to say Link's Adventure. I guess it's because of Link's Awakening. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, last uh, entry, it's Dark Link from the <laughs> Adventure of Link. This is just trash, man. You can barely see him. You're like, I'm going to put him right next to here. But Link's Adventure Link uh, is... Ugh, God, I did it again. <laughs> Adventure of Link, sh Dark Link, just doesn't feel great to fight. And mechanically, he comes out... Like, story-wise, he comes out of nowhere, it feels. Like, uh, fight your evil self, and he... <sighs> I don't know how you're supposed to fight him fairly. I just go in the corner, I stab with my sword at his knees, and I win if I have enough life left. That's it. <laughs> Very much no real story presence, and just feels like a gotcha moment from the devs to make uh, the finale of uh, Adventure of Link even harder than it really is. Well, actually, no, it's really hard. It just makes it harder than it needs to be. <laughs> so yeah, that's the list. Main characters and antagonists from the entire Zelda franchise, uh, with a few exceptions. But what do you think? Uh, what does, uh, like, what major disagreements do you have in these places? And wait, we're forgetting one character. I just realized that. We're, forget we're forgetting a few. Hold on a moment. Okay. Um, I have to use fan art for these, but uh, CDI Ganon. <laughs> he just dies in one hit, man. Come on. But he is funny in the cutscenes. But he's he's right next to a CDI Link in terms of like uh, like he's he is better I want to say than uh, CDI Link, but in terms of threat compared to all the other Ganons, he's he's really low. He's just kind of funny in a jokesty kind of way. I did not include uh, the cartoon uh, Zelda and uh, cartoon uh, Ganon by the way. I don't I don't I can't really rank those. I feel. I, I, but if I had to like say it outright, what I think about Cartoon Zelda and Cartoon uh, Ganon, uh, Cartoon Ganon would be uh, decent, and Cartoon Zelda would also be lower decent. They were kind of insufferable. In fact, uh, no, what? No, no, let's put them in. They would both be in mid, next to roughly uh, Cartoon Link. I feel like I've got some nostalgia for them. I didn't watch the show very much, but I. I've got some nostalgia for them, but they, they weren't that good. They were very much a He-Man tier uh, generic writing, in a sense. If that makes any sense. Anyway, beyond uh, moving on. We got Harold Warriors Ganondorf. Really good. Really, really good. If we, we actually go into... I don't want to put him in the best, actually. I want to put him really high, though. Just, you get to play as him, and he's fun to fight, and he's fun to... He, he he he's like the one Ganondorf that really gets to you get to see his plans coming to fruition, and that makes him a lot more dynamically interesting. I feel, but uh, it's mostly mechanically why I put him so high up. They they did a really good job at making him fun to play. I feel 
So that's why he's so up, uh, high up there. And finally, we have Linkle. Linkle is basically the main character of uh, Harold Warrior, Harold Warrior Legends uh, second story mode. And she's very fun to play as. In fact, I really, really love playing as her. I, I kind of want to put her in lower grade. Character-wise, she's very... I can see some people thinking she's very insufferable. Because she's like if they gave Link a cartoon Link personality, right? Like if they gave him a really annoying, uh, I don't know what I'm doing personality. And in the case of Linkle, it's very much a... She keeps uh, getting lost and that's the joke. And she never develops out of it, it feels. And to some people, they don't like that. I think it's okay. In that sense, it's it very much would be annoying if we had to like see it every single time and she reappeared in more games. But uh, I think she, I, I just love playing as her in uh, both her crossbow move set and her, her boots move set. It, it helps that the crossbow move set is a uh, very uh, competent and great to play as. But yeah, now this should be the full list. The best is uh, very uh, Wind Waker favored and Majora's Mask favored. You can kind of tell that. Uh, those two games are dear and near to my heart, but then you got Spirit Track Zelda being top, top, top. A Link to the Past Link being amazing to play, I feel. And some other entries there that uh, also uh, deserve uh, honorable mentions, and it just keeps going. But yeah, what what are your disagreements about this list? Which ones do you feel uh, should be better or lower? Comment down below. Uh, subscribe for more. I will be doing more tier lists if you want to see me do more of this. And uh, hope you've all enjoyed the video and have a great day. Bye-bye!